Hi, this is Doug Burks with Security Onion. Today we're going to see how you can use Security Onion to configure Bro and Elsa so that in just a few minutes you'll be able to see all of the DNS requests on your network and be able to slice and dice those very quickly and easily. So this virtual machine, uh, I've already run through the first phase of setup, so now it's time to run through the second phase of setup. So I double click on setup, enter my password, and click yes continue. I've already configured my network interfaces so we can skip that part. We're going to choose advanced setup because for the purposes of this demo we're just going to enable Bro and Elsa and disable everything else. So advanced setup, click OK. We're going to do a standalone installation. Here we're going to create our username and password for logging into Elsa. So we specify our username, specify our email address, set a password and confirm the password, set the default IDS engine and the default IDS rule set, specify that Ethernet 1 should be monitored, and again we don't need the IDS engine so we're going to disable it. We do need Bro and we just need one Bro worker. We don't need the HTTP agent, agent, don't need Argus, don't need Prads, we don't need full packet capture. We'll keep the default 90% disk usage threshold. We don't need salt, but we do need ELSA, and we'll proceed with the changes. So right now, setup is configuring Bro to monitor Ethernet 1. This virtual machine has two network interfaces, Ethernet 0, is the management interface and Ethernet 1 is the sniffing interface. So if this was your production sensor you'd connect Ethernet 1 to your tap or span port to monitor the traffic in your network. Bro would then see that traffic and create its amazingly detailed Bro logs to include things like the CON log, the FTP log, the HTTP log, the IRC log, the SSL log, and so on and so forth. So this virtual machine is not connected to a live network. Instead, we're going to simulate some traffic by using TCP replay to replay some of the PCAPs that are built right into Security Onion. So as soon as setup is completed, we're going to go to our terminal, use TCP replay, create the traffic. Then we'll take a look at the raw bro logs that are being created based on that traffic. And then we'll go into the ELSA web interface and see how you can use it to take hundreds, thousands, millions, or billions of logs and slice and dice them quickly and easily. So our setup wizard should be just about ready to do its final configuration for ELSA. And now setup is complete. So we just click OK a couple of times and we're done. So we're going to go ahead and double click on the ELSA icon. This is going to launch the Chromium web browser to take us to the ELSA web interface. And we're going to click Proceed. And while that's thinking, we're going to go to our terminal window. And here we're going to use TCP Replay to replay some of the PCAP samples that are built right into Security Onion. So I'm just going to enter this command and put in my password. And then TCP Replay is going to be taking each of these individual PCAP files and replaying them to Ethernet 1, our sniffing interface. 
So while it's replaying those, I'm going to create another terminal window. And we're going to go take a look at the raw bro logs. So bro by default is logging to slash nsm slash bro slash logs slash current. So if I go to that directory, I can see all of my standard bro logs. So we see the con log, that's uh, connection records, that's session data. We see the DNS log, and that's going to be the focus of our demo today. We see the HTTP log. We see known hosts, known services. We see the notice log, which is a very powerful log, a lot of interesting uh, things to notice in that log. We see the SMTP log, the software log, the SSL log, syslog, and the weird log. So Bro is creating all this amazing intelligence about what it sees on your network. So let's focus on the DNS log. So we'll do more DNS.log. So here's the beginning of our DNS log. And you can see at the top we have the file header, which shows all the different fields that are being logged. So you see the source IP, what Bro calls the originator IP, the source port, the destination IP or what bro calls the responder and the responder port you see the protocol the transaction ID the actual DNS query some other DNS specific information and then finally you see the answer that comes back from the server and the TTL so let's take a look at what does an actual DNS log look like so here's our source IP destination IP the DNS request and here was the response that came back from the server and the TTL. So again, very powerful. We've got all this detailed information in our DNS log. So let's take it the next step and let's, let's be able to take hundreds or thousands or millions of logs, which may be across a handful of different sensors, and let's use the ELSA web interface to slice and dice all of those logs and give us the answers that we're looking for very quickly and easily. So we go back to our web browser and it's now prompting us for the username and password that we specified during setup. So we enter that in. And it does take a minute or two for Elsa to fully initialize. Okay, so Elsa is now fully initialized. And as you can see in the upper right hand corner, we have 20,000 logs in our, uh, available to us in our Elsa web interface. So since we're focusing on DNS logs, we can say, hey Elsa, show me all of your DNS logs and submit the query. So Elsa is going to go and look at all of the logs that it has and it's going to show us that we have 314 DNS logs. By default, Elsa is only going to show us the first 100 of those, just for speed. So what we can do is we can clean up this interface by switching to the grid display. So now with the grid display, you can see that we have timestamps, we have source IPs, source port, destination IP, destination port, protocol, host name, 
And the answer that came back from the DNS server is that final field there. So with the grid display, it makes it very easy for us to click on a column to sort by that column. So we could sort by source IP or sort by destination IP or sort by host name or sort by answer. The other thing that we can do, if you'll notice here at the top for each of these headers, there's a number which indicates the number of unique instances in that entire list. So for instance, one of the things that I can do instead of having to look at every single one of these 314 logs is I can group by unique host name. So if I click on this number, then it's going to do a group by on the field that I've clicked on. And you can see that query happening in the background. So what's going to happen is it's going to take all of our logs, group them by host name, and all of our standard legitimate host names that are queried for constantly on our network, those are going to bubble up to the top. So you can see we have 37 instances of workgroup. So this is actually an artifact of uh, the fact that Bro not only logs DNS requests, but it also logs Windows NetBIOS name service requests to the DNS log. So you'll see things like workgroup and things like MS Browse. But if you look at the, the standard DNS requests here, we see things like we have eight requests for this apple.com, and then we have eight requests for this sourcefire.com, and we may expect those requests to be made on our network. Looking further into the list, we may see things which we don't expect to see on our network, like this foreign host name, so maybe we want to drill into that. So we click on it, and then that will show us all four of those entries in, our, in all of our DNS traffic. So we'll be able to see all of the source IP addresses that queried for that particular host name. And so here you can see we have two different unique source IP addresses that queried for that host name. We could click on the source IP column to sort by that and we can see that there were three requests coming from this one IP address and then the fourth one down here. So again, you can, you can sort by these fields, you can slice and dice these things any way you want to. And in addition to that, also makes it very easy to then pivot from not only your DNS logs, but to, to some other kind of log that we have available to us. So for instance, if, if I find it interesting that this particular IP address was querying for, for this host name three times, maybe I want to drill into this IP address. So I click on it and that brings it up here to the query bar. So I can just change this to group by program. And I submit that query. And then notice that in addition to DNS logs, we also have some connection records for that particular IP address. So if, if we had enabled snort, we might also see some snort logs. Uh, if there were HTTP connections out from that IP address, we'd see those as well. So again, ELSA makes it very easy and very quick to be able to look at all of your DNS traffic, slice and dice it, and pivot from any anomalous DNS entries to any other kind of data types that you have available. So that concludes this screencast. Thanks for tuning in.